Now, let's bring back uh, former White House senior policy advisor, the great Steve Miller. Steve, let me begin. This is way too easy, but I'm, I'm just going to let you rant for a minute on the uh, bill itself. And then I have other uh, questions and thoughts for you. But go ahead. I bet you love this bill, right? Great to be back with you, Larry, as always. So I'm actually going to get technical for a second, if I could, because I think it's an important point to get across for your audience. One of the things that we learned about infrastructure in the Trump administration is that for all of the money you're spending on infrastructure, you could have more roads, more bridges, more improvements to your community by throwing that entire bill in the trash can and passing the following one sentence into law. All approvals for new infrastructure shall either be approved or rejected within one calendar year. <laughs> that right. one sentence, Larry, <laughs> will mean more roads, more bridges, more infrastructure, more new cement, more new asphalt, more new airports, more new everything, mm. and it won't cost you a single solitary penny. What this money does, and it's only a quarter of the massive bill, but what it does is it actually takes money that blue cities and states have already earmarked for infrastructure with their large tax hikes and their large tax plans that they already have in place. It takes that money, allows them to divert those funds to other left-wing projects, then fill in the hole with federal tax dollars. So actually no new infrastructure spending happens. It's just a cost shift, Larry. So your point, though, it's a very important point. Now, now we had regulatory changes uh, for NEPA and for pipelines and so forth. In short, you're saying let's stop lingering over the uh, projects, okay. Uh, approval should not be longer than one year. Not five years, not 10 years, not 20 years, which is the system now. That's your basic point, is it not? Exactly. Nobody wants to invest in American infrastructure because there's, there's no certainty. There's no predictability. You start investing in a blended public-private project, how long could that last for? Could it be built in two years? Maybe. More likely six years, more likely 10 years, more likely 20 years. What kind of investment is that? The correct approach to building more infrastructure is to have the guarantee you'll get a yes or no answer quickly, mm. and then to lever, to lever federal dollars to get more private investment and more state and local investment. No, it's good stuff. Uh, absolutely good stuff. Let me take another angle, Steve Miller, on this. You know, President Trump issued a statement today very clearly opposing this. He really panned it. And he basically said, this is going to help China, not the U.S., because of all the tax hikes on American businesses, large and small. Now, I want to ask you, there's a memo from Congressman Banks, Republican in the House, uh, on Republican mm -hmm. strategy. You know, make the GOP the party of the working class, and he wants us, the party, to embrace uh, or bear hug Mr. Trump's policies, okay? And he says the following. The party of the working class, mechanics, small business owners, custodians, electricians, nurses, factory workers, police officers, and so on and so forth. They're worried about jobs. They're worried about China. They are worried about the health of their businesses. They're worried about the culture. They're worried about tough immigration. Now, let me ask you, how does this big infrastructure package, which may come in two tranches, including the so-called social infrastructure, how does this play into those politics, Steve Miller? It's a great question. So first of all, I salute Congressman Jim Banks for that memo. He has it exactly right. The GOP does need to be the party of the working class. It needs to be the party of people that get up every morning, that work long, hard shifts, sometimes in very thankless jobs to keep this country running. He is 100 percent right. Now let's apply that to this legislation. How does taxing a small business, when you combine all the taxes, payroll, state, local, federal, pass through, more than half of its income, how does that serve the interests of working people? How does that serve the interests of everyday citizens? And then on top of that, you have in here social engineering. Mm. You have programs that have nothing to do at all with infrastructure and everything about giving power to left-wing bureaucrats in Washington, D.C., taking power away from local communities, away from local decision makers. And finally, to the point about China, Larry, which really is the most important point, the one that President Trump emphasized, we are handicapping ourselves in that competition. 
We are handicapping ourselves by saying it is more expensive to move your business to America right. than it is to China. That is a giant self-inflicted economic wound. I mean, at the, at the level of, you know, 30,000 feet, Steve, this business about transformational is true. I think the Biden team has a vision which enormously boosts central planning in Washington and enormously reduces the role of the private enterprise, private sector. I think that's what they want. And I don't want that kind of transformation. President Trump didn't want that. Some of our greatest achievements, including uh, the vaccines with Operation War Speed, was working with the geniuses in the private sector, how we got through that. But I think Team Biden has an FDR-type vision, you know, updated, modernized to the 10th power. And I think that's going to lead to no good in the economy. And by the by, I don't think it's going to help them politically. I'll give you the last word on that. Yes, yeah, so... Joe Biden is desperate to be compared to FDR. Now, we'll say for another day, Larry, an explanation of how FDR's policies dragged out the Great Depression. Mm -hmm. But I will just say this. To me, the most apt comparison is to Jimmy Carter. And it's the malaise attitude. Mm. It's the sense, and you saw it at the summit in Anchorage, where we got browbeaten by China, and we were like a, a puppy dog with our tail between our legs. If you want to get pep in America's step, then you have to have the attitude of, Bring your company here. Build it here. Start your business here. We're going to get rid of bureaucracy. We're going to get rid of wasteful regulations. We're going to put our faith in the American worker who is going to build that future, not Washington, D.C. That's what makes us different. The pioneers, the settlers, the trailblazers, these are people who work with their own two hands, who blaze these new frontiers, who did it themselves. That's our heritage. That's our character. That's how we get on top in the world. And we will reward your success, not punish it. How's that? That's so exactly. important. All right, Steve Miller just going really strong. Great guns, the great Steve Miller giving us some perspective. Thank you, my friend. Thank you.